let that lovely compliment stand. I think that, again, uh, what I was struck by, and, and let me move back, and, and it, it applies to what you were saying as well. My great privilege as a, a journalist for the many years that I was a journalist, I could go out and see things. There's feet on the ground. I didn't, you know, I didn't pick things up from the media or anything like that. I went and saw, and lots of times the story I went for didn't exist because all the reporting on it uh, was fallacious to get a story. There was some reason, I can remember, for example, um, uh, at the point of time, it was USMB, there was all these big stories in the US and we needed it. So there was one, Black Power, of course, was a huge story in the States. Canada needed their Black Power. So they sent me to um, a community, Africville, in Nova Scotia, that was supposed to be right with, uh, um, right with, um, uh, with rage and black, and it was these people who had been there, turned out to be a community that had been the squatters there for something like 12 generations, and they were being moved out of the city, be, uh, out of that space because it was convenient to the city to do so. There was good reasons to, because their water supply was not adequate and so on and so forth. But there wasn't black power. But why I had been sent there for black power was because a CBC, uh, this is way off subject, but it's on about it. A CBC, um, a group had gone there to do and had done a documentary on black power and they had been taking the children as they came to, came out of the school, little children, and, oh no, excuse me, they showed, one of the big things was they showed their camera and this woman coming out with, with a ruler and it was like they could barely get out alive of this particular situation. This is so much viciousness in this community. It turned out when I got there, this was a teacher. They had been cornering the little kids on the school ground, and they were little kids, and they were saying, why do you hate the white man? And the kids were going and crying, so the teacher came out to get rid And it was a, a beautiful community. A, 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 um, everyone had their stories. They spoke, and, this, and I must say that this was a big learning curve for me as a journalist, uh, because they were simple people without a lot of education, but when people talk about what's really important to them, they find the words, they find the lyricism, they find the passion. And it was a beautiful story, but not at all about black power. And so if that comes from going to a place, from seeing, you're not repeating that which you received, etc., etc. Now I confess that in terms of um, a lot of things I say about animal abuse, etc., comes from being online. I check my sources. There are groups that have been well established that have a good track record. But um, so that is a new way of uh, finding information. So to me, we uh, as as a member of Toronto Pig Day, we were protesting around um, the issue of you know, right on the ground again, feet on the ground at the trucks, watching the animals, seeing them suffering, seeing them dehydrated. Um, we were we were doing we were online all the time. We were communicating online. But to me, the piece missing was to go to source. Um, this is an industry that would be on life support if it weren't so um, federally subsidized. If it weren't so provincially subsidized. So eventually, you have to go to the people who can make a difference, and you have to present them with something that they can change to make a difference. Something they can do. You can't just um, think it would be a good idea if this didn't happen. You have to, and um, again, um, I'm afraid I'll talk about what you said. Anyway, so, um, again, um, Toronto Pigs Day, um, when I first belonged to Toronto Pigs Day, the whole idea was you just had to end the meat industry. And while I can agree with that, I think improvement within it is also valuable and it also gives people things that they could do. And you can take these cynical attitudes and saying, well, the more you quote improve, improve it, the less chance you have of getting rid of it. That's true too. But um, I think that if you get rid of, say, gestation cages, it may not be very, it may not go far to pull down the, um, 
the hog industry. But it, for the pigs that used to be in the gestation cages, you know, it makes a big difference. So it's, it's, it, there's a lot of how to get, how, okay, so um, how to get change. Um, we have many ways, and I think we have to use them all. I think, we, I think that um, social media, I think, is wonderful to gather together. Uh, groups of like-minded people, not just to talk to each other, but like-minded people who will then have the impulse to go out and do something, whether it's protest, whether it's a uh, march to pull down all slaughter, close down all slaughterhouses, whether it's um, some particular aspect of um, the thing that you are protesting that can be changed, but eventually you have to go. We live in a democracy or some version thereof, and you have to go to the people who can make change. And so, to me, the missing link with Toronto Pig Save was to get it out there in front of um, Queen's Park. And whether we're there talking to ourselves for a while, we're there. Um, I, did, I was aware of some of the politicians at least looking out of the windows and seeing us. Um, eventually, the media understand that something is happening and we'll go with the graph. So, um, uh, that's a big ramble, but um, I can't remember, yeah, I do remember the question that I entirely avoided answering. But as I said, the compliment you paid me was so splendid. <laughs> 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 I tried to recreate uh, my powerful moment.